Yo guys, how's it going? My name is George and I'm gonna talk to you guys today about why I think you should buy a GT86 if you're considering one. Or even if you're just in the market for anything that's Japanese, real drive and looks good, this could be the car for you. Well, the internet knows this car to be quite a slow car. It isn't slow, it's just not very fast. It's got 200 brake horsepower, 151 pounds for your torque, and by sports car standards, that isn't very much. But by hot hatch standards, if you think, if you compare the straight line performance of this to a Fiesta ST, then they're quite similar. So if you think a Fiesta ST is good to drive, you might think the same about the GT86. So I guess the first and probably one of the most relevant things about this car today is their value. They're still in production, but you can get a used one for like 12 grand. Now, considering brand new ones are in the 20s, I don't see why you'd get a brand new one, but to be honest, I wouldn't pay the price that I paid for this car again. I got this car for 15 and a half thousand pounds and I don't regret that decision to get this car at all. I have absolutely loved this car. I still do. I'm just moving on. Well, you can even go out there and get yourself a Cat D example for 9,000 pounds and this is a great car, nine grand. Reason number two to why you should get a, oh my God, that was a big pothole. Don't get a GT86 if you don't like potholes. Some of them are quite stiff. Um, reason number two to why you should get a GT86 is because even in stock form, I think they look brilliant. I remember when I first got this car, completely standard, I could not stop looking at it. Now obviously I did bits to it so I could keep it fresh and enjoy it more and use up some of the potential that this car has because the aftermarket scene for this car is quite big and that's probably point number three actually. You can do pretty much anything you want to this car. I've seen engine swaps, body kits, wide bodies are popular, turbo kits, supercharger kits. So you might buy this car thinking, uh, it's not that fast, I might get bored of it pretty soon. Don't worry, because today, you could have a 280 brake horsepower GT86 for the price I paid for this one, about 15 grand. You can get one for just over 10 grand, and then you can put a supercharger on it for five grand, and there you go. 300 horsepower GT86 and it is an absolute riot. Trust me, I've driven one. Uh, point number three, uh, the community of GT86 owners, in my opinion, is amazing. I've had viewers and subscribers tell me they bought a GT86 because of the videos I made on mine, like making them want to go and get one. And to me, that means the world because there's nothing, I don't think there's any better kind of feedback on a YouTube video and to see someone spend like more than £10,000 on a car because of your influence, I think that is amazing. Um, so to all the people out there who have ever commented on my video saying you got one, I really hope you're enjoying it and I believe you're going to continue to enjoy it for a very long time. And if you get bored of it, just do bits to it, don't worry about it. There is unlimited amounts of stuff you can do and they all improve the car quite a lot even though it's a good place to start. But on top of that, I've got so many friends with GT86s. Whenever I see another GT86 on the road, we either wave or flash each other just to like say hi. And there was this one time, even quite recently, I pulled up next to another one in a Halfords car park. Don't worry, this is not a Halfords with. And we just, we ended up talking for a good 10 minutes about like what we'd done to the cars, uh, plans and how many miles they're on and just stuff like that. I think it's really nice to have in the car community and I'm sure there's other cars out there where the owners are the same, like they give acknowledgement and respect to people who have the same car as them. But this is only my second car. My first car was a Ford Focus and when I got this, I had no idea that there was such a good community around this car. Now, adding on to that, I think the reason why the community around this car is so tight is because this isn't really a car that anyone just goes out and gets. Um, what I'm saying is, you only really go and buy a GT86 if you specifically want a GT86 because you buy into it knowing it's not the fastest car in the world and that it's great for handling. So for the most part, the people who buy these are actually car enthusiasts and I mean like proper ones. Uh, I've just joined the 
the M25 and I'm doing 35 miles an hour and you might be able to see it. I'm going past people and I'm still on the slip road so this journey is going to be fun. Uh, more on the community side, I don't necessarily have to say this but as you can imagine there is always that one guy who just does the weirdest shit to his car and everyone in the community is just like what the hell are you on mate? There was this blue and black wide body GT6 that I almost bought myself until I realised it had been stolen, it had been tampered with and the Rocket Bunny kit was actually installed pretty poorly so and it's actually people from the GT86 community who told me not to buy it for those reasons. Like, they did actually have my back on that one, don't get me wrong. Ever since I got my aftermarket exhaust fitted to this car, I personally felt when I shot that video up in Wales, it was really confidence inspiring. It made you, like with this car, not gonna lie, you do kind of have to rev it out to get the maximum performance from it. But at the time, when I was up in Wales and like driving near the Evo Triangle and stuff, it didn't matter. Personally felt like the car wanted me. Like not only was it kind of required to get the most out of the car, but I kind of felt like the car also wanted me to rev it out. Like literally seven and a half thousand revs, banging it into the next gear and then just putting my foot flat to the floor straight away. And I'm not even gonna lie, some of the time that was going around corners as well. The car was just so balanced, it's such a good chassis. I don't know if my next car's ever gonna handle like this one, but if it if it's really that much worse, I might end up just buying another GT86. <laughs> now I don't know how much I'll miss this car because I have had it for over a year and I am ready to move on. But I also just wanna say that if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, because of my GT86 then please don't worry, don't run away and subscribe if you're new and still want to see GT86 content because like I said I've got I've met so many other GT86 owners through having mine and through YouTube so there's always gonna be GT86 content on my channel. Since I drove the supercharged one I've had one person with a 2.2 stroker kit ask me if I want to have a go, I've got another friend with a turbocharged one with over 300 great horse parries asked me if I want to have a go in that and yes I do. I would love to see more examples of GT86 and what owners have done with them because it is such a good platform to start a project, it really is. Now personally I did decide to stop after doing like the little things, I didn't want to spend serious money on this car because I knew that I wanted something else at some point. But if you do decide to spend money on this car, Trust me, take it from me, you won't regret it. They are so good. And that includes stock form as well. I don't just mean modified ones. In stock form as well, they are so good. I'll never forget it. I've got so many YouTube videos to look back on. So many pictures taken by myself. And a shitload from other people as well. So, so enjoy the montage. Subscribe to see my new car reveal coming very soon, hopefully. I'll catch you guys in a bit. Peace. Feel the waves cut through me Hypnotized by the sounds I'm breathing in Hold tight, hold tight Can't make coast collide Hold tight, hold tight, hold tight Dripping lights paint the skies All because of you
Thank you.